Hello and welcome to the East Telford Benefice for our online Lenten reflection and our last day of Ros Clark's book, 40 Women. The Bible reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 to 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. We began this series with a woman in a garden. And so we end it with a woman in a garden. The first woman, Eve, was with her husband in the Garden of Eden, where they walked free and talked with the Lord God. This final woman, Mary Magdalene, was with a man she believed to be a gardener, until she talked with him and recognised him for who he was, the Lord. Mary Magdalene had been present to witness Christ's death. She came to the tomb of his burial and saw the stone which had been rolled away, but still she did not understand. She thought the body had been stolen, hidden or removed by the Roman guards, or possibly by the Jewish authorities. Even in death, she thought, they would not allow him to rest in peace. She went to call the men, the disciples, who might be able to do something about it. Simon Peter came, and so did John, to examine the tomb, to see what had happened. They didn't understand, and they went away. But Mary stayed. She stayed to weep. Presumably, that was why she had come to the tomb in the first place, to continue the process of mourning. Though the body was not there, her grief still had to find expression. She stayed And so it was she to whom the angels spoke. She stayed, and so it was she met the gardener. The angels and the gardener all ask her the same question. Woman, why are you crying? It's a rhetorical question. They know why she's crying. But as she answers them, she reveals her heart to them. They have taken my Lord away, she says. Because even though he has been crucified, died and buried, he is still her Lord. He is still her master, her teacher, her Christ, her Lord and her God. 
I don't know where they have put him, she says. Tell me where you've put him and I will get him. Because she still wants to honour him, even in his death. She wants to ensure that he has the proper anointing, the proper burial clothes and the proper tomb. Because she needs to know where he is in order to be near him. Even though he's dead, he is still the most important person to her. And then with one word, Jesus turns the whole world upside down. Mary. He calls her by her name. It is the first word that reveals him as a risen Christ, and it is a woman's name. By it she knows him, just as he knows her. By it he proves that he is alive, just as she is. By it he cares for her, just as she has come to his grave to care for him. Of course she wants to cling to him. Of course she wants to touch him and hold him to her and never let him go, of course. But the risen Christ has a different task for her. This woman, Mary Magdalene, is to be the first witness of the new life, the first herald of the resurrection. She is the one to go to Jesus' own disciples and tell them, with eyes bright and joy bursting forth, I have seen the Lord. From the first garden to this new garden, from the first life to new life, women have been part of God's great story from the beginning to the very end. They're not important because they are women. They are important because they are people, God's people, saints, sinners, victims and heroes, faithful and courageous, wicked and cowardly, caring, compassionate and kind brave, beautiful and bold, ordinary and extraordinary, women who show us the worst wickedness imaginable and women who show us the deepest faith of all. So we come to some time of reflection. Why does it matter that a woman was given this high honour of being the first to witness the resurrection? Consider the women in these studies and the women in your life, in your church, in your family, at your workplace, among your friends. What can you learn from these women? So let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for all that we have learned about you and about ourselves, from the women whose lives are recorded in your word. Thank you for those whose faith is an example to us and those whose wickedness is a warning to us, for those whose courage is an inspiration to us and those whose compassion is a model for us. Thank you for those used to preserve your people and those who spread the good news to all nations. Thank you for those who cared for Christ on earth and all those who have been cared for by him. Thank you that for as many women as there are, there are as many ways to love, serve and follow you faithfully. May we go and do likewise. Amen. Thank you for joining us with this um, Lenten Reflection. Ros Clark's 40 Women. Hope to join you again with a different reflection. God bless. Take care.